Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I thank all of our witnesses here today. Uh, as you've already heard, the United States is a leader in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, all while increasing energy production. Extremely important point. We have reduced emissions and increased production. Since 2005, the United States has reduced net greenhouse gas emissions by 17%, and this reduction occurred while primary energy production in the country increased by 48%, even at COP which I went to in 21, 22, and will be going in another several weeks, it is widely acknowledged that energy demand is not going down, and in fact, it is going up, if not doubling, over the next decade. I'm proud to say in Iowa that the state that I represent has slashed its carbon intensity from electricity generation more than any other state between 2000 and 2020. My home state generates nearly two-thirds of total electricity net generation from renewable sources, including over 60% from wind energy. Additionally, Iowa produces more fuel ethanol and biodiesel than any other state in the union. Meanwhile, China emits more greenhouse gas emissions than the entire developed world combined. In fact, China's carbon emissions increased this year by 4% in the first quarter of this year, reaching the uh, highest first quarter number on record which is why it's problematic that the Biden administration is continually turning to the Chinese Communist Party to produce energy components. Meanwhile, they increase coal-produced energy. Additionally, America's air quality also surpasses the rest of the world. I remember growing up as a child that we were going to die of acid rain. We couldn't fish in the river. If you fished, you couldn't eat the fish because of mercury, and uh, pollutant uh, air pollution was a uh, cause of uh, asthma. U.S. levels of fine particulate matter are far lower than the world average and lower than Europe and Southeast Asia. In fact, the United States manufacturing industries are often environmentally cleaner than the global average. If environmental regulations on particulate matter currently being pursued by the EPA are put into place, this could have unintended effects of increasing greenhouse gas emissions and cr criteria pollutants by having to rely on products manufactured overseas. Mr. Menenzies, um, how does the Biden administration's tunnel vision on an electric vehicle only future jeopardize U.S. energy security? Uh, well, thank you for the question, uh, I think. Um, <clears throat> well, what we have been discussing here is that, you know, that the people are not going to uh, necessarily choose that there's going to be a one option for them. So they're going to want options. Uh, and so if you put all your eggs in one basket, you are probably going to get some pushback. And so I would just say that you need to keep a broad view. There's going to be many component parts of trying to get uh, to reduce emissions in the transportation uh, space. We have talked about today the transportation sector now, you know, uh, leads, if you will, in emissions over the power sector where we've gotten tremendous uh, uh, drops. So but it'll be the consumer that's going to be driving these choices. I think they all consumers, you know, wish to uh, produce less emissions. But... Whether or not you're going to be forced to buy an electric vehicle is something uh, something to. to Does it put the with. U.S. At disadvantage more to my point uh, when component parts, battery parts, minerals are developed, processed, mined, uh, refined well, then, overseas, coming into the United States? Yes, indeed, particularly with the EVs, because we know China produces all the parts, and by by embracing uh, you know EVs, it's China that leads the world in producing uh, EVs. Uh, and so you see pushback in, Europe, uh, in Europe, Germany, for example, you know, the uh, internal combustion companies of uh, Mercedes-Benz and Porsche, you know, they are pushing back on Europe's attempts to go to 100% uh, or zero emission uh, vehicles. They do not want to give up the global leadership in those technologies, nor do the U.S. manufacturers of these uh, uh, automobiles. And so I see China is sitting there. They cannot compete in the in internal combustion engine automobiles. They, uh, they dominate electric vehicles, so why wouldn't they support a global push for uh, electric vehicles? Thank you, and I say that as having owned uh, two uh, Honda Civic hybrids, uh, which my, my hybrid was an excellent uh, uh, blend between the two. Mr. Mills, can you discuss the important role U.S. manufacturing plays in reducing global emissions? Well, the U.S. manufacturing sector is obviously central to prosperity. Germany is a manufacturing giant, as is China. Germany is in danger of deindustrializing. It's been widely covered now because of their energy policies, not because of uh, environmental policies, but because of energy policies. The United States would follow Germany's path now, apparently, which would be destructive to our industry and therefore destructive to general environmental goals because the manufacturing will occur in China and in India, which are expanding their coal production and, frankly, their environmental practices are 
substandard from our perspective, to put it politely. Uh, which then undermines the United States uh, security uh, uh, and uh, leads to great disruption. So thank you. With that, I'll yield back.